Welcome back to the Feast of Hemlock Meal. I'm Rather Incoherent, and it's night two, which means it's time for the fight scenario to end all fight scenarios, the longest night. Welcome to Arkham Tower Defense. Now, I'm a bit stressed about this. You may notice that I've done some analysis and some planning. So let's start with our deck upgrades, get that out of the play, talk about our starting assets from the story resolutions, and then we'll get into this mess. Let's start with the hype as hell upgrades with Winifred Habamach. She got 15 experience counting our Karen's Obel experience. She's doing crazy stuff. I've upgraded my British Bulldogs. These are going to ignore a loop. That's going to be relevant for this scenario, but so is the fact they get plus two now, which means pretty much any two skills is going to get me over the bag for opportunist. I've also upgraded one of my pilfers to be recurrable, and I've upgraded a breaking and entering two to replace the second pilfer. Ideally, in the next scenario, I pick up Beguiling and I put both of these under Beguiling because consistently I found Pilfer to be the worst draw in the deck. I would love to just have it eventually and not need to have it in my initial draws. And then lastly, I've cut my last calculated risk. I really do feel like the flexibility of Unexpected Courage is just infinitely more valuable to me than the slightly higher last action value on Calculated Risk. And we've added Ace in the Hole. Winnie is the best user of this card in the game, crawling through her deck so quickly that at worst she's playing it every third round. And the sales pitch, the dream, is that you play it every round, but I'm expecting it to fall somewhere in the middle of the two, pretty close to like average every two turns. We'll see how it actually goes. But Winnie's deck is looking hype as hell. I'm loving the upgrades that she got. Vince, as always, is looking a little bit underwhelming and in particular a little bit weird this time. Upgrading Perception's really obvious. It's a fight scenario, Perception's great draw, Runic Axe is the fight card, I need to find it. That's the same reason getting Unrelenting was so good, getting Charisma so I can play my Guard Dogs makes sense. Upgrading Stand Together level 0 to E-Cash level 2 is a very self-centered and weird choice. Winnie has never needed the Stand Together, and you know this because she's always been crazy resource positive despite having never received one. So this is just plus one resource plus one card draw. What's really weird here is not the Stand Together into E-Cash 2 upgrade, that's a little bit weird, but I did it over Deduction level 2. Honestly, if this were three players or more, I probably would have still got into Deduction level 2. But at two players, there are so many two player clues locations, or sorry, one player clue locations that come out to just be two clues, that a lot of the time deduction two feels very wasteful. And I'd rather, like, instead of the slight clue edge I'm getting out of upgrade deduction, I really want the draw. It's super important. I've got to find the axe and get going. Winifred's got to do something and get going. Like, I just need to mulligan for Thieves Kit super hard so that I can commit and go. And these aren't really upgrades for the decks, but you get everyone you danced with in the previous epilogue as allies. So I have William Hemlock for Vincent, giving him plus one book, making it a bit easier for him to investigate off the bat. Rosa Marquez is also always with somebody. In my case, I'm giving her to Winnie again. Plus one book doesn't matter for her, and it would be helpful. But plus one foot for Winnie just seems so impactful compared to one book on Vince. And Theo Peters is the other person I danced with because, like, I just want this move action. Holy shit, this is so important. I'm feeling the action tax trying to defend from all sides here. The free move action feels absolutely massive to me. A uh, quick overview of the map, you can start literally anywhere you pick, and I believe we pick individually. I'm pretty sure it's phrased that way. Let me double check. I'm having doubts now. Each investigator begins at a play location of their choice. I'm picking two of the fields. I'm going to get into why in a little bit. And then I get to start with players' barricades, a trap, and a decoy, and I'm picking the path I'm not at, and I'm leaving the longest path undefended with the intent that we'll sort out something later. Now, the way this scenario works is with the Agenda 1A, the Onslaught, we have a 10 Doom Threshold. When checking Doom, anything that's not on the agenda is negative Doom. You need to survive until the night ends. And Force, when a card would place Doom on the agenda, it goes on to something else instead, which is essentially what normal Doom on the agenda is, because now we have to survive longer. This scenario is getting harder by placing Doom elsewhere. And Force, after a Doom is placed on this agenda in player order, each investigator draws the top card of the enemy deck. Yes, there is a 33 card encounter deck. There's also a 14 card enemy deck. And you draw from both every turn, which is terrifying. Now to deal with this, we have the Act card, the Longest Night, Protect the Captives. Lightning Bolt during your turn, spend a clue, place a barrier, decoy, or trap at your location. We won't be resigning, and we will be surviving, so we're done with this card. Now the rules for barriers, decoys, and traps are on the screen now. I'm going to go ahead and get this as big as I can for you. Essentially, all of them are one clue. You can only have one trap or decoy at a location, you can have unlimited barricades at a location. And barricades go on a connection point between locations, so they're really always going to be at two locations. Barriers prevent an enemy from moving. Whether it's hunter or patrol, when an enemy tries to move through a barrier, they just eat the barrier, only the one, and then stop. Horror, the decoy token, deals one damage and then exhausts the enemy, and then that enemy will not ready in the next upkeep phase. And traps, which are the damage token, just deal two damage to an enemy. And that would be a ton to help us, except for the fact I have some enemy cards over here to help remind myself. 
You see, the Slithering Hybrid has the bottom line of text that ignores literally everything, including fire treacheries, which I'm hoping we don't need to play with. The Equine Hybrid has the bottom line, or actually the middle line on him, forces below it, that he ignores traps. This guy ignores barriers, the bird just flies over them, and the Capra Hybrid, I don't know exactly what the lure on goats not being able to be attracted is, is going to ignore decoys. So one type of enemy ignores each type of thing, and then one type of enemy ignores all the things, but he is the smallest enemy. And I'm gonna go through the enemy types now, cause I wanna get like all of this out of the way and really focused on once before I start trying to do it quickly later in this scenario. And I don't wanna like have to read it all every time I draw these enemies, cause I'll be drawing them a lot. Over the course of this scenario, I reckon I'll draw them a minimum of 18 times. The Capra Hybrid's the biggest of the lot with five health hitting for one, two. And he's always gonna spawn in the place that has the fewest enemies. Conversely, the Slithering Hybrid is the smallest of the lot, and he's always going to spawn in the place that has the most enemies. And notice that both of them, and in fact every enemy in the scenario, except for the bear, who we'll get to in a second, is patrolling to the farmhouse. Our objective isn't just to survive the night, it's also to survive the night with the captives. We can't let them die either, they've got 10 health, and the enemies at this location will be attacking them, so tower defense it is. Capra Hybrid's a huge guy with alert, but ultimately just a bag of hit points to kill. Meanwhile, Slithering Hybrid, despite being the smallest, is still aloof. Lupine Hybrid is weirdly enough an elite enemy, but he's kind of just a guy. He feels smaller than me than the Capra does. He has Retaliate, which is genuinely scarier, for most teams at least, but he has one fist against the Winifred. Or sorry, one foot against the Winifred, so I feel pretty confident with dealing with him. In my opinion, this is easily the least threatening guy in the deck. Which brings us to the two real troublemakers of the scenario, Equine Hybrid and Molting Hybrid. They both have the bottom line of force stacks when they would take any amount of damage, reduce that damage to one. So just like Tommy and Malloy, these guys require three separate instances of damage to kill. The equine hybrid is going to ignore the traps. The multi hybrid is not just ignoring the barriers. They're also aloof, so action tax there. And on the whole, as you can see, there are three of all of these except for the hybrids, or sorry, the slithering hybrids, which there are two of, and they spawn at different locations. All of these guys, the equine hybrids, have different spawn conditions, and you can see the actual arrangement of it here, with the east field being slightly worse. And this is how I work. I wanted to know like how to optimize the scenario. What does the scenario look like? So I arranged like what are the spawn, what are the spawn conditions? What are the actual enemies? And I set this up to remind myself and try to do it as best I can according to the rules. All of these locations are randomized. And now let's talk about the bear because there's still a piece left. We are almost 10 minutes into our recording and we're still covering the rules of tower defense. He's the same bear you remember. He's still terrifying. Hits for eldritch horror numbers. He's 5'6", 3, but he's actually 5'11", 3 in two players. He's Hunter, Massive, Retaliate, Prey, Lead, Investigator, which is Vincent for us. And while he's moving, every field is considered connected to one another. And that's actually very helpful for us because it means we can like run him back and forth. Theoretically, we can bait him into coming to this field, then run to here and bait him into coming back if we position ourselves correctly after the decoy. Like you can run him back and forth. My plan is to drop decoys and traps and just start dragging him back during round two. Initially, what I want to do is I want to have Winifred clear a field location and Theo move out. Then we're going to see if something spawns there. If it does, we're going to go back in and try to deal with it, put it down new traps and go back out. I want to just drag the Ursine Hybrid through a wall of traps. And I feel better about doing it over here because if I end up with enemies that prevent me, that where it causes a problem, as the game so often does, if I'm next to the bear and I run away, the bear is just right after me and I'm going to have a really hard time getting to a point where I make him run to an outer field instead. So if I start away from the bear and I get the same wrench in my works, I can just walk away and refine. And I think that's how I feel best about it. The same logic is happening with Vince. I just want to give myself two shots at a functional field, and I want to get the traps and decoys down in the field where they're going to spawn off the bat if I can. Because I'm not up here, I'm meeting all of my starting materials over here. And because this is the longest path, I'm just assuming that as we wrap up over here, we transition to the left and deal with the enemies the hard way. I'm not sure if this is the best plan. I, I honestly have no idea what's meta or what's not here. I don't know if I have to use fire. I, we're gonna find out. Let's mulligan, let's get into it. We've talked about the rules far longer than we ever should have. I think we have to hold Sparrow Mask and, whoops, my bad. Uh, do we hold eCash on the logic that we need economy and it replaces itself? I'll hold one. I can't really justify holding two. Runic Axe, baby, we're off to the races. Vincent. You are ever going to live up to your flex title. I am not orange, which means my hand hiding is still off. Okay. Winifred, let's see it. Thieves get. Sleight of hand is important later, not off the rip. Lucky cigarette case. I don't know if I can hold opportunist. I really wanted to be able to... I should have considered putting them together to funnel resources into winning. I don't think I hold easy mark. 
And if I get second easy mark, I'm going to really regret this. Right now, it's this, this, and then I need something to get it with Opportunist. We should know our starting Shroud values, I think. I'm actually... I, I saw that it's three, but I don't know for sure that that's the case. Draw opening hand and mulligan at this time. Where is everything involving the scenario? Before scenario setup. So you actually shouldn't know your opening shroud value, and in which case I can't assume that it's easy and I have to assume that opportunist is hard to do. Easy mark's rough if it's only one easy mark, but it's insane if I get two. I think I hold it. <laughs> that's not quite the mulligan, please no. Uh, that's not it either. Okay. We're gonna need help on Winifred, that's fine. I think I'm just taking full play actions round one on Winifred. And we start with two clues. You start with two players clues, or sorry, you start with two clues on each player if you have allies, if you dance with people, and you start with three clues on each player if you face the night alone, if you don't have friends from the resident set. So I'm going to just hard play both of those. And there's no good commit here, so I will just easy mark last action, which means I've played this in the wrong order. Perfect. Wonderful. Over here, own vets. Sparrow Mask, Runic Axe. What's your location? I should have read this on Winnie too. I just knew that I couldn't do anything good with her turn. Three Shroud. I forgot that this is only... I don't know why this is only during your turn. I guess there could be weird timing windows. But let's just imagine I did it on Winnie's turn. The situation hasn't changed at all. I won't though slammed down immediately. I'm going to spend her starting clues doing that every single time. And her location was three Shroud, four clues. You get a trap for finishing the location, which is very nice. Hopefully I can do that. And as a lightning bolt, I can move a trap around. Cool. Over here on Vince, we have three shroud, four clues. This one places a barrier after the last clue is found, and we have the same thing, but removing barriers. We've done two actions. Do we investigate up two with perception and deduction? Seems good. Yeah, I'll do that. Deduction, perception, back in the auto field, let's go. Thank God, I could use the game being nice to me right now. This is a stressful scenario. I get two, I spend them immediately, and I place Trap Decoy. Upkeep phase, the Ursine Hybrid readies. And what do we get? Deduction's fine. Ace in the hole might just have to get used to draw three here. This might just be a really, really janky cryptic research in this situation, which like, it's fine. I'll get it again later, it'll be good, but uh, I'm not online, like at all. One of 10 Doom. Enemy cards, our first one is Slithering Hybrid with the bear. Our second one is Slithering Hybrid with the bear. <laughs> nice lag, thank you. Okay, uh, so both hybrids off the top. Now the bear moves to connecting field, so I can just bait it somewhere else. This is fine. Let's do our evil cards real quick. Incursion. This is fine. I don't actually care about this at all. Uh, this is a one-to-one -one test base. I assume the bear is mutated, right? Yes, of course. So if I fail this at one to one, it just moves to me, which is, I want that, that's fine. Oh no, the bear moves and attacks as though it's the enemy phase and it eats the trap and decoy, taking three damage and getting evaded and it will not ready this turn. Oh no, <laughs> how, how unfortunate for me. All right, that actually sucks though, please no. Uh, I think my cigarette case is just done. Uh, yeah, cigarette case is just out, it's done. Like, later on, I can deal with that, but not right now. Uh, I'm actually going to try to break that with Arrogance first action. Just because I know it's going to fail. Uh, so I test down one. Uh, that, that's still minus one. I break the Arrogance. Then I'm going to draw a card. Oh, I take a damage for failing on that? Sick. That's fine. Uh, the Opportunist is helping a lot. I'm going to draw a card, though. We can test up three with Opportunist. I don't know if I really like that. I'm going to play Ace in the hole. Interesting how that combines. Get my actions back. I can play to Lila and then test with Unexpected Courage Opportunist up four. I think that's the plan. I play to Lila. I Unexpected Courage Opportunist on this Fungal Rot up four, beats the bag. Skulls minus one, I get Opportunist back, get my Winnie draw. This is gone. And since it's gone, Skull was a minus one, I actually draw a card off the cigarette case after it goes away. And now I'm going to investigate. I think at this point we might just wanna, I don't know, we can probably just beat the bear to death. This is an enemy we know we can hit normally. 
All right, Winifred does need to get a clue here, though. I'm going to manual decks and opportunist this. That beats the bag by a million on my last action. Ace in the hole, despite being used to draw some cards, was still really fucking good. Uh, draw a card off winning. Draw two off manual decks. Opportunist comes back. Get a clue. And I'm going to use my Theo move, and I'm going to bail. Uh, choose a trap at any location and move it to any other location. Bam. Moving it to the outer fields where it will hit them on spawn and give me slightly more freedom to move. And then I take my Theo move and I'm out. There's no reason to place a barricade, so I'm just going to leave. During your turn, it passes a trap on it. Lightning Bolt moved to a connecting location. That's fantastic. Uh, I spend my last clue and I'm going to put a trap on this location. Because that gives me a Lightning Bolt move. It might be worth it to drop a barricade on the other side. You can't do that, so... Anyway, I Lightning Bolt move again, and if I had money, I could Lightning Bolt move here, but unfortunately, I am super broke right now. Although our hand's looking a lot better than it was. That's it for winning. Ace in the hole was very important to that turn. Now, over here for Vince, this guy has four health left. I mean, that it's like the number. I need to beat eight by four. I need a total value of 12. Uh, we're looking at five as our base value. Uh, so it would take three accuracies to beat 12 and then three damage to kill. I could full spend the axe. That can't, I have e-cash. Do I full spend the axe, e-cash, and play another one? I've never done that before, but I think that's the play. Makes the clues I got here seem a little bit worthless. Yeah, I have to have a total value of 12. My base value is four with the axe. Then 6, 8, 10. Oh, wait, I'm never getting 12. Shit. A part of me is like, you just don't kill the bear here. You let it go eat the traps. But I don't like that at all. I think that's very low tempo. I don't have to get the clues by killing it, right? I can just beat the bag by four. I just spend charge, charge, charge. And that's going to give me three damage by just ancient power damage on all of them. That's enough to kill. And then I need to get accuracy, accuracy to put me at a 7 and 9, beat the bag. And I'll use the last one on Glory, because I may as well. Because Glory just needs me to succeed and kill the enemy. And then I can draw a card, which I'm pretty defeated on. So yeah, we triple charge and we don't auto-fail. If we auto-fail, I think we either e-cash axe or run away. Not sure which, but just don't auto-fail. Easy. Okay. Bear's dead. I'm sad I didn't get to drag clues out of him, but he has five fists at a three-shot location, and eight's a pretty high value to beat. Uh, we will get a value off of this. I'm going to take a draw over a heal and on the end, I think. Practice makes perfect is wonderful. Uh, second action, I'm going to investigate with this practice makes perfect. Search the top nine. Oh, did I hit anything? Is this a whiff? Oh, that's not good. Yeah, no matter how many times I look at it, those cards are not the skills in my deck that this affects. Well, maybe practice makes perfect isn't as good as I thought it was. I'm currently five up. I think the deduction beats two minus threes. I will commit deduction to this. Plus one. I get both clues. That's not the correct person. And having gotten the last clue, I can place a barrier. May as well. I'm going to spend two of the clues. This was the original plan. Drop a decoy and a trap. I think I walk up. There's no reason I have to walk now. I can e-cash, but it doesn't do anything. Okay, I walk up. I don't see a reason to stay there. Let's see what's going on. We have the Vineyard, Lightning Bolt. Let's read the Shroud, three shot, two clues. Lightning Bolt, engage an enemy, and when an enemy enters here, heal at one damage. So that's annoying with like the guys who can spawn here and yeah, I, I can see how like eventually we get a cell spawn on the Molting Hybrid and it's a problem. But oh well, upkeep. Uh, Hunter phase should happen first, it won't matter. Uh, they just come forward one. That's it for Hunter phase. That's it for upkeep. Top of the round, two doom, two enemies. First enemy. Outer fields south. Idiot gets tripped. He takes three damage. And he'll eventually just die if I put another trap in front of him. Uh, second enemy. Outer fields east. He ignores traps, but the idiot still gets tripped and takes a damage. Only a single damage, because he will never take more than a single damage, but also because that's the number that decoys deal. Now, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's see the evil cards. Remove one doom from the agenda, deal two damage, which is removing completion, essentially. Or take three, three to wrecked. Yeah, you know, I think I'm going to put the doom back down. Rotting remains. It's my favorite. 
I'm going to commit Savant and Unexpected Courage to test this at four, wait, three, four, five, six, seven to three. Draw my winning card. Fuck off. <sighs> it's fine. Like, that's not a br that. Okay, it's not fine, but that's not like a wrench into the clockwork of the character like auto fails can be on money. Three horror hurts. It's a big deal, but I'll be fine. I've got tons of extra soak over here. I don't currently have a bulldog. I can probably get a bulldog pretty fast, but I can't do it yet. And pickpocketing doesn't help me draw because I don't have, you know, anything that draws. Which is like a bit scary because these guys can get moved by, what is it, tablets? Yeah, tablets can cause them to move. This guy's gonna have a combined value of uh, five on like a kill with the axe in a few turns. I think I want Vincent to try to transition over to the right. This guy's just irritating because he's like not at a clean value. I think I just drop a trap and accept that he's probably eating the barricade. If someone else spawns south, then that can force them through the barricade and Lupine will get to go through immediately and I won't be wasting the barricade. It's out of my hands. But I think I just ignore this guy. I drop a trap. He dies eventually. Problem solved. I'm going to go first on Vince, because if Vince, like, somehow makes a Slithering Hybrid move, that'll affect how Winnie plays her turn. Going to go. I'm going to play this E-Cash, because I don't have the resources to do much right now, and I want to draw this card. Guard Dog's fine. Guard Dog can help with stuff like Equine Hybrid, even though I don't want to deal with it that way. I'm going to investigate with Unrelenting. I'm stealing good tokens, so if I get a 1 or a 0, I'll just pull again. And that puts me up 3. Pull again. That's exact pass. Draw my two from Unrelenting. Should have done that first. Not that it matters. And get a clue. Crack the case. Uh, I don't really need resources right now. I'm fine with that. I'm going to walk up. Before I do, I'm going to spend a clue twice and a trap decoy. And then I'm going to walk up. Do I want to buy a movement for two resources? Top is fine. Right doesn't really need help yet. I don't see a reason to buy movement this turn. Which brings us to winning. Winning is the hard turn because I want to play pickpocketing, but I'm broke as shit. Finding clues is a way to handle that. On winning, I'm taking my Theo move. I'm going right. What do we have to deal with? Enemies get plus one damage value. Doesn't matter at all. When it's revealed, Ajax, it's good to see you. Ajax is an ally asset with two meat soak. Your first action each round does not provoke attacks of opportunity, and you can exhaust him to move twice or go to any field location. If he's at your location, you can take control of him. Any player at Ajax's location may trigger this ability. Oh, I don't even put him at the location. I just take him. I just get him immediately the instant it's revealed. I'm really glad Winnie got this. I thought, like, it was the bottom part. He doesn't went here, but no, you just get control of him. You read Ajax, and you have him, and he doesn't take up an ally slot. Fuck yeah, join the crew. We got four now. It's a far cry from the zero allies we started with. Doesn't really help the current situation, but will be helpful later. Also, unfortunately, kind of anti-synergy with Theo. I guess I can like, go to a field, do my business, and then leave without using any actions. So yeah, never mind. That's not anti-synergy. That's sick as hell. Also, that was a Theo move action. I need to stay here to deal with him next turn. There's a chance he just get past, but I mean, can't do shit about it. Uh, the way I say there's a chance because like you can get an unfortunate tablet in a mythos phase. There's an event like the one I passed on turn one to get the bear, or the one I failed. It was a good outcome, so it feels like a pass. But the same thing that moved the bear could just force these guys into the captives and hit them. There's nothing I can fucking do about it, unfortunately. I just have to investigate here and do what I can to get value. So I'm going to look at and investigate with quick thinking and opportunist. That's seven, eight to three. There is a minus four that would cause me to lose these and nothing else. That is a risk I'm willing to take. I get my winnie draw. Minus two. Opportunist comes back. I get a quick thinking action. I get a clue and a resource, and I should spend that. And I get my cigarette case draw. There we go. I knew I was forgetting something. Pilfer and breaking and entering are, as I was saying during the upgrades, I want these under be guiding. They're the worst draws in my deck. Without dirty fighting in play, they don't really have value. I have no money to use them right now. I need guns. Do I just commit these alongside Opportunist right now to keep getting value? I think so. Uh, Pilfer's not happening. Absolutely, positively not. I'm going to investigate with these kit. Six, seven, eight to three. Again, don't minus for me. Goodbye, Opportunist. You were good while you lasted. All the same, I do get the other resource and the other clue. I just have to troll. I have to find... Uh... Oh, that should have been quick thinking, not the action. 
I think I have to draw though. I think I just have to find gun and I'm out of proactive ways to find gun. So I draw. Um, I played easy mark on turn one, didn't I? Yeah. Uh, holding easy mark seems shit. I'm going to play easy mark and draw. I'm a hypochondriac, not the thing I'm looking for. Uh, that's it for us. Enemy phase, they patrol. This guy spawned this turn and won't ready. This guy spawned last turn and readies. Upkeep. Quick thinking is nice, but not really the solution. I'm still stressed about those worms until we get through this. Two of ten doom, two cards. Molting hybrid south. There is nothing here. And he ignores barriers, which is the worst case scenario, because now he comes forward and he eats them. This was the one disaster. Fuck. Uh, what else can I do? Uh, this one. We find hybrid east. He spawns. He takes two. I don't like using the big ones. It feels visually cluttered to me. That's it for that, but still enemy cards. Fucking Christ, this is the nightmare. Oh my God, it's a foot test on Vincent. He hasn't been able to heal. He has nothing in hand to help. He's just uh, one to one with lucky in hands. That's better than I thought it would be. I'll just pass. Okay, rotting remains. Again, I need to not auto fail this one pretty badly. I'm gonna do savant quick thinking. Uh, do I need the quick thinking? I just want the draw so badly. This puts us at four, five, six to three. Quick thinking's probably not triggering. I'm just going to savant this. That feels so bad. I think I take six to three. I think the action from quick thinking has less value to me. Six to three. Skull. Minus one, baby. I get the quick thinking action. I also get my winnie draw. Get out of here. Oh shit, we're on fire. We're, we're ready. Uh, they're still here. When does slide of hand put the item back? At the end of your turn. I think it would put it back immediately if I used it right now, so that's no good. I'm going to spend my quick thinking action playing Dirty Fighting. All right, it comes to our turns. I play sleight of hand British Bulldog. And these guys are aloof, which would be a problem for most characters who don't have guns that ignore the aloof keyword. All right. It's not counterattack on the level of like Alessandro the power word to just hold the enemies. It's not counterattack that it's as effective as just like using carnivorous mic in it to eat the whole ass bird. But I'll take ignoring aloof. We are going to shoot as our first action. I have nothing to commit. I mean, it's seven to three. I'm up four. I just have to be okay with that, man. Minus one. I'll get my cigarette case draw. And this guy dies, putting him in the monster discard pile. Welcome to it. You're the first one. I'm going to do it again. Up four. This one's also dead. I'm going to take my Theo move. Is there anywhere we're going there is helpful? I could ride out to here and just shoot this guy. No, because that's Ajax. I don't have any actions left after I use an Ajax. I'm going to Theo move to here and see what's what. The coop. Four shroud. Two clues. Minus two shroud if there's a decoy on it, so that's not a problem. And enemies are harder to fight here, and I can light it on fire, but I'm afraid of lighting it on fire. Maybe I should, though. For reference, lighting it on fire is this. My big fear is that I don't want locations on fire because it's not enough to deal with enemies. Even with two fires on the same location, most enemies will just walk through it, like everything except the slugs. And then other stuff will start lighting on fire, and when he will have to be literally running around putting out fires, and figuratively, which is how I originally intended the sentence. So, uh... I don't know that lighting that on fire is on the whole beneficial to me. I think I'm just going to uh, spend an action, or sorry, spend a clue. Drop a decoy here to lower the shroud by two. I don't really see myself playing breaking and entering. I'm going to commit breaking and entering nimble to be at, oh, these numbers are even higher now than I thought they were uh, because I didn't update them for Delilah. So we're at seven, eight, nine to two. That seems pretty good. I'll take my draw. Hi, easy mark. I get as many nimble moves as I could possibly want. I get a resource and a clue. So I'm going to walk over here and see what's going on over here. Move an enemy to a connecting location. Group limit. How do barriers work? Via a keyword. This isn't a keyword. I could theoretically grab this guy and throw him over a barrier, which is cool as hell. Unfortunately, I'm out of actions right now. <laughs> that was my last action. So not relevant right now. 
After you discover the last clue from this one, you heal two damage from the captive, so I have a little bit of leeway for a full 10 health clear, but not much. Anyway, that's it for winning. I need to go deal with the shit bird, and then I need to place a new trap to deal with the dog. I think that might just be like, play Jessica, get on the mend, take a free clue and walk down. That sounds great to me, actually. I'm going to play Jessica. I'm going to use this ability to gain one clue from the token bank this round. And I'm going to walk down. And Jessica's going to heal and give me an on the mend. All right, that's it for us. Enemy phase. This guy is not ready yet, but he's going to ready in a second. I'll just do it now. He walks in. He hits another trap. He fucking dies. Get in the discard pile. This guy bounces off the barrier. And this guy would have ignored the barrier. It doesn't matter. I couldn't ever do it a different way. And then he eats both of them and takes two damage and exhaust. And he will not ready this phase. All right. That's it for enemy phase and enemy upkeep. This is our upkeep. Manual dex two is amazing. I wish it hadn't been so close to the bottom of my deck. Hey, death, uh, you're not getting played. Three of 10 doom. Enemy cards. Farmhouse East. Getting to have a big problem over there. This one's not aloof. Maybe we can deal with that. This should be back in your hands. Uh, next one, Farmhouse West. Hello, I forgot to place traps. Oh, it feels so retroactive, but obviously I wanted to. I just didn't. <laughs> oh man, I was so busy like thinking about Ajax next turn. I'm sorry to do this because this feels like it's retroactive, but it's not. This is <laughs> this is why I wanted to be here. I would have nimbled back twice if I didn't want to come to this location. Well, there's no reason to place them. It's trap decoy for both my clues and he's exhausted. Well, there's a reason to place uh, the trap because he ignores that one. But yeah, he takes one damage. God damn it. Uh, messing that up feels bad, but I think in this case, it's like very obvious. Like, oh yeah, if when he's not leaving, she obviously doesn't want to get jumped by whatever spawns. Would like to defend herself. The reason to be here is to do this. Anyway, that's not even the whole bad phase. Hunting Shadow. I take two damage. Easiest choice of my life. Test five fist down to three because of the damage on me. If you fail, I can take two damage. I've got the soak for it. Or toss the highest cost in my hand, which is not allowed. So I'm three to three, I have nothing to commit. Sounds like I'm taking two damage. Right on time. Definitely wanted you on this skill test and not on the skills, but I'm, I'm happy with not taking damage. I can't complain too much. It's two resources to put a bullet in this guy, which seems fine to me. Uh, he'll kill himself after this on the next location. Does Vince need to go first? What's going on everywhere? Vince has to kill this. Then he has to place literally anything on his location. Then these guys are coming in. I think Winnie has to get over there this turn. I've got second side of hand Bulldog. And when he comes here, she's going to shoot this guy twice. So it's Ajax, Bulldog, Bulldog. And then I'm just gonna walk with the bird, I guess. <laughs> Delilah's always gonna be X resources for one damage against this enemy type. So I'm not like concerned with whether or not I deal damage to this guy who's exhausted or one of these guys, it's always one damage. Yeah, that damage would have been a bit worse with Hypochondria, since I auto-failed a Rotting Remains. Need to... Fucking hell, I should have put that on my ally assets. I didn't know if there was direct damage to allies in the deck, so I just put it on me, but obviously it should all be on ally assets. I just fucked up. That's saying they're all scenario. We're never getting rid of it. There's no time. Uh, Let's start on events. On events, I spend both my clues, and I do this immediately because I've learned my lesson about thinking about it later in the turn. That deals with the dog. I don't have to go out to the field to deal with him. The bird is here, he's exhausted. First action, engage the bird because aloof doesn't stop working on exhausted enemies. If they printed official errata that said aloof required the enemy to be ready, everyone would cheer. The fact that dirty fighting has like that line at the end just so that aloof is like slightly playable for dirty fighting is brutal. I, I wish they had just errata it when they realized dirty fighting didn't work on aloof enemies, but no, we just, Every time the exhausted aloof enemy situation happens, I'm just furious. It's such an unfun thing. We might actually start playing with the house rule at my table that aloof requires readiness because everyone at my table hates this. But we're sure as shit not going to bitch out and start playing with it mid-scenario right now. That's how it works. It's an engage action. I have no way of dealing Tesla's damage, so we engage the bastard. Next up, we're going to hit him with an axe. Value of two. Value of three, five, four, I need a nine. I have an increased fist, five, I need two accuracies. 
I don't need damage. I can do accuracy, accuracy, elder's glory. Oh, I don't actually need the second charge even. Just accuracy, accuracy to beat the bag, and then elder's glory. Uh, elders will get the last clue, and glory will do something, probably. That seems right to me. Let's do it. Minus three. He's dead. That absolutely isn't correct. You get in the correct discard pile. I'm going to take this clue on events, and for my glory, I'm feeling a bit tight on damage, actually. I've got five soak left in chest and gameplay. Don't be a fucking coward. <laughs> I'm being very harsh on myself. This scenario has me stressed. I'm going to crack the case in game three as well, uh, but I'm going to draw a card. Howard Mirror. We don't have time for that. Uh, we're, we're doing this whole scenario on what's currently in play, it feels like. Uh, there is a real situation where, like, equine hybrids are dealt with better by dogs. I can't go out to the Lupine's location, which is the problem. I'm glad I put all my starting traps at the location where no enemies spawned, right? <laughs> I have tons of money. I can move a jump, and that'll help me deal with the bird next turn. I don't even think that's helpful. I think I want to just, like, take an action to kind of set up a little bit. Because I think this is Winnie's job, and I think this... I know I'm, like, giving Winnie a lot of jobs by just, like, pointing at every enemy on the map. But Vince has killed the bear, killed that bird. He's killing this Lupine hybrid. He's doing his part. He's doing good. I think Winnie has to deal with that shit. So I'm going to spend a second and play a guard dog. So I just need to see where enemies spawn to know where I need to be. Now, on Winnie, uh, I'm going to Ajax as my first action and ride out here, at which point this man engages me. Uh, did I have any clues? No. Uh, I have to come here first. I would love to like stick around and drop a decoy over there, but I don't have that option. I am going to sleight of hand my gun back into play. This man is at a value of two to my base nine, huh? Manual decks and easy mark. Oh, do I wanna? I probably wanna play pickpocketing, which is fast, and dodge this man to start grinding. Base seven on the dodge. Uh, base a million, please do not auto fail. It's really important. No, we're good. Draw three, two from manual decks, one from Winnie, one from cigarette case, one from pickpocketing, gain a resource. He's tripped. Okay, hands looking a lot better. I dirty fight him, three to two base. Uh, we toss the gun, a million up. <laughs> or sorry, we dirty fight him with the gun, we don't toss the gun. Um. I commit other gun. We can redraw it next cycle and watch this. And I bet all of my money because I know no restraints. Fantastic. I get a barrier. Sign me up. That sounds great. I also make all of my money back. And I deal a second damage to this guy. Thank you, Dirty Fighting. I am going to shoot him again as my next action. We are, again, nine to two. I have no commits. That's fine, I just won't commit. Nine to two, let's kill him. Not a problem, he is dead. And then I take my Theo move, and I march in pace with where the bird is going, because he's about to ignore that barrier. Okay, that's it for us. Enemy phase, he hunts. We haven't seen any Capras. We've only seen other enemies, which means this decoy is probably getting ignored and he's spawning at a fewest location. We're probably putting the first Capra we see up there, but uh, there's two or even three Capras. I think it's fucking three. Yeah, there's three Capras in the six card deck. So I'm gonna let this, even though I generally like the decoys more, I'm gonna kill this guy with the decoy. Uh, the bird just flies over. He doesn't give a shit. This guy readies an upkeep. Does he? Was he new? He spawned on top of Winnie this turn. He does not ready. Upkeep. Bandages are great. Opportunist is fine. I mean, I mean, it's great, but like my hand's so empty that it doesn't feel great. Four of ten doom. Enemy cards. Probably Capras. Uh, one of them. On average, I guess. Luprine Hybrid is going to the top. He eats a trap, takes two. I should have looked at them independently. I don't know why I flipped both that time. It's not a big deal. 
Uh, he's forced to spawn bottom or right. I genuinely don't know which one. Uh, when he's not dealing with him, if he goes right. Unfortunately, this guy's just gonna like eat all the stuff up here. We're not dealing with him. When he can Ajax over and shoot him, I have to find a slide of hand to do that. When he's currently running on fumes. I might have to engage dodge that dude. Oh, this is back in hand. I mean, engage dodge dirty fight isn't the worst thing in the world. Especially with a pickpocketing going into play, but uh, it's not pretty. I'm going to put this here and we're going to get to it eventually. Like that's going to be Vince's job at some point, I think, but he just can't do it right now. Anyway, evil cards. Incursion, huh? This is for Vince. One, two. That's just forced to be the bird. If it hits the bird, then we have to use this ability to heal the enemies. There's like no way around it. Uh, we're currently at four doom. This is a two foot test. I'm up zero, up one. I meant to say down one, but up one with lucky in hands. That'll do it. Thanks, Vince. Over here, downpour, test three book. Not great at that. And I lose actions or place clues. I have to lose actions. Sign me up for an anything you can do better opportunist, please. That beats the bag by a million. Just don't auto fail me. Minus four is actually fine. I'm pretty sure three, four, ten. Minus four is still six to three. I get opportunist back. I draw a card because I am a winnie. I take a horror on one of my many, many ally assets. Get out. Unfortunately, anything you can do better won't be cycling. But I mean, that's what it's here for. And even if it doesn't cycle, it's still great. Okay. Another mytho survived. We're almost halfway through the night. We have to place a trap for the Capra before we leave, just to make it manageable for vents. I think we start this just by using the Thieves Kit on our first action, putting us at base seven to three. Any two skills will do it. And the two skills I have are Opportunist, Unexpected Courage. When he draw, fuck off. Uh, What do I do then? I have to commit pickpocketing. Easy mark, try again. I just don't have anything going. I have to draw off the cigarette. Do I have to draw off the cigarette case? I don't have sleight of hands. I need sleight of hands to do my fucking job. Yeah, I'm going to take this even though it's like not great. I'm hoping I can draw into a breaking and entering, but that's probably not happening. Yeah, no, I, I, I can't do that. I have to just deal with the bird, but I can't. So what I have to do... Where did pickpocketing go? I was considering committing it. I play pickpocketing. Then I engage and trip the bird up a million. And I'm going to commit. I don't have two foot. I just have to do the trip trade. Zero. That'll lucky cigarette case me at least. And then I get both pickpocketings to draw two. Gain two. That's my second and third action. I dirty fight the bird because I may as well. Hey, ace in the hole. Is there a different way to play this now? Not really. But you're going to be useful at some points. I dirty fight the bird. Three to two. Dude, Dirty Fighting the Bird sucks. It deals one damage, but I can't commit anything useful to it. And I'm just fucking terrified of Tablet, right? What's the phrasing on Tablet? It readies, moves, and attacks as if it were the enemy phase. So the nearest enemy readies and then moves and attacks as if it were the enemy phase. Because nothing readies in the enemy phase. Uh, so the two Tablets are fucking terrifying, but everything else is fine. My chance of success is pretty low. It's not that low. There's... Like 7 out of 19? 9 out of 19? It's got to be the play that you risk it on the tablet. I'll just fail. I still get the barrier. That's actually sick. It's not conditional on success. I'm going to play Delilah four fucking dollars to shoot this bird. I don't know why I got a resource token because resources are what I'm thinking about. I'm going to play Ace in the Hole. I don't feel like I've done enough this turn. I easy mark twice. Remake my money. Draw two cards. Oh, hey, breaking and entering. You're really helpful right now. Nice. Uh, I still have no slights of hands. I think I just hard play the gun. Oh, wait. Dirty fighting didn't miss. I get plus two to my skill value. I'm an idiot. It lands. I beat minus two. I beat minus three. Dirty Fighting's a card that does things. I was just so demoralized because I wasn't using my foot. I forgot that my fist is actually functional once they're tripped. Actually, I was at six. I was up two even without... Holy shit, I'm bad at the game. Look, I, I'm of the mindset that if Winnie's not using her foot, then she's offline. I, I'm gaslighting myself a little bit there. Okay. 
the ace in the hole and a double easy mark and landing the dirty fight hit makes me feel a lot better about our current situation. I might just punch that he's aloof. I can't. <laughs> Literally fucking can't. I might investigate with the thieves kid. Commit these. I don't have the money for this. I I know it looks like I have the money for this, but pr trust me, I don't. Like, I can see a turn next turn with Nimble and dragging this guy into traps and doing useful stuff, but right now I'm just trying to sort out how the hell I get through this. I can't play the Bulldog, because if I play the Bulldog, I'm going to find myself in a situation where, invariably, I draw two sided hands and the Bulldog's the bottom card of my deck and I'm just screwed. I can't commit breaking and entering, because breaking and entering is just so efficient. And I have no real way to push draw this turn. I think I'm actually going to investigate once, just straight up. I have nothing really going for me. And I'm, I'm up a million just on the chest. And I kind of don't see a point in drawing, or sorry, uh, in doing that again over drawing, because I'm probably playing Breaking and Entering next turn, so I'm gonna draw a card. And I guess I could have killed Hypochondria, but like, I'm just, Hypochondria is here permanently. I'm not dealing with it. Okay, uh, Bird's tripped, this guy's tripped. They're both readying this turn. This guy's hanging out in the north for a very long time. What does Vincent have for us? He is probably supposed to deal with the Capra. He can also push into the north field and deal with that guy. His axe will be charged by the time he gets there. He could get there right now, actually. Move, lightning bolt, move, kill. I've got a clue to place, and I'll get... All right, I move. I spend my two player's resources to lightning bolt move. Let's see what's going on up here. What location is this? The milk house. Three shroud, two clues. When you would place a decoy or trap at Milk House, place it at an adjacent location instead. I mean, I don't really see much value in that presently. And I could also light this on fire too. Did I forget to use Sparrow Mask when I was on that fucking foot test? Holy shit, I'm bad at the game. I just saw that. I was like, this Sparrow Mask hasn't been used yet. That's weird. And I realized I'm just terrible. Uh, yeah, I like the original plan. I had a moving out and engaging this man. Vince is great at this. Three Shroud. Oh, are these all the exact same? No, there's one with less Shroud and more clues. Uh, but Three Shroud, four clues. After I get the last one, drop a decoy and Lightning Bolt to move decoys around. Uh, I have this man. My last action has to be swing at him. And that's three, six, minus four is ten. That's the full axe if I do it. I don't have the money to play a second one just yet. I would really like to pick up three clues, though. If I did Elders, 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 I would need Accuracy, 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 and then I wouldn't deal enough damage. Right? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I need to beat that minus four. I could do Accuracy damage, and then Accuracy, Elders, Accuracy, Elders. And that puts me only losing the minus four, and otherwise I get two clues and kill the guy. It's spooky, but I'm doing it. Uh, don't minus for me, don't auto fail me. That's fine. Double checking. Three, four, five, plus four from accuracy. Nine minus three is six. I succeed by three. Three is the shroud. I am taking two clues from my two charges of elders. And I am killing the man. Oh, actually, I was counting that wrong somehow. He had two damage. I was doing it for triple damage. I was doing accuracy, accuracy, damage, damage, elders, elders. I, I would have done accuracy, 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 damage, elders, elders. Not the even split that I did to beat the minus four. All the same, the result doesn't change at all. Um, I get two of the clues here. I would immediately like to spend two of them. Oh, it's that bug. I would like to spend two of them for a decoy and a trap. I think Vince needs that decoy. If we get a Capra, we can probably throw it south. Uh, we might get double Capra and be forced to give one to Vince though. Odds are decent of that. We also might just get North Spawn followed by Capra. But if it's North Spawn, it eats Decoy. Anything other than Capra it hits the Decoy. So what I'm thinking about is, do I want to throw this to the south side? Well, if something spawns south, it's going to be the Capra anyway, right? Like, moving this Decoy doesn't seem to have any real value to me. So that's going to be it for us. Enemy phase, this guy eats a barrier. Upkeep, if this one readies, because it was normal dodge. This one was dodged last turn by a Decoy. Easy mark, good to see you. Right on time, at a crossroads. God, I want to give that to Winnie for the breaking and entering pop-off so bad. Uh, but if I do, and she discards specifically the gun, that's a little bit shit. There's nothing in Vince's hand he's ever going to play. I might give it to Vince, 
He could discard Lucky or Runic Axe. I was like, give it to Vince, gain a resource, so I can replay Runic Axe immediately. I think this has to be an action on somebody. Discarding Bulldog is catastrophic, so it just has to be an action on Vince. Oh, this should have healed and given me on the Mint. Forgot that. I'm giving it to Vince. I'm taking the immediate action. I'm gaining a resource. What can you do to me? Take a bandages. Who cares? Okay. Top of the round. Five of ten doom. Evil cards. I find a hybrid north. That's probably Capra. Yep, the south. One Capra, one something left. Uh, we see two equines. I think we've only seen one shitbird. No, we've seen a shitbird at the start. I think it's another lion. I'm not quite sure what it is. Oh, but this guy spawns. He ignores traps, but he does not ignore the decoy token. Okay. We're fine. Everything's fine. Evil cards. Innervation. This is a one fist test. If I fail, I take two damage. I think I'll be fine. I take this up three. This is not worth it on the mend. I get a barrier. This place is walled the fuck off. Over here? Gross. Very gross. Well, as long as I'm not actually performing a fight action, it doesn't hurt me. Unfortunately, I am performing a move action pretty much invariably, so it's it is going to hurt me. Just guaranteed. I think Winifred's just going to shoot the bird with Delilah. Like, I was planning on getting this with breaking and entering, but I, like, no, it's not worth it. I spend my clue, and I drop a trap on my location to help deal with this Capron a little bit. And then I'm going to pay Delilah four and shoot the bird. Oh, you know what? I didn't need to be scared, because after upkeep, this would have readied. So if we got the test for incursion, i just shoot the bird. Yeah, that wouldn't have been a problem. Because you can spend the money on Delilah during the bird test, like when you're committing skills. Anyway, that's one problem dealt with. I assume that I Ajax out to here and deal with this man. I've got the most time for him, though. He's actually about to go get tripped again. Like, he, I really don't need to deal with him. I can Theo out here and start dancing with this guy. Actually, that's a great way to get value out of these pickpocketings. Okay. Theo action, frozen in fear tax. Let's dance. Three foot. I have a base of seven. I'm going to evade. I unfortunately don't have good commits, but I don't feel like I actually need this pilfer. Getting the trap would be nice. Breaking and entering is nice for tripping birds. Like, all of this is nice for things, but, uh... Something's got to get committed. Is there a Savant in my discard pile? I'll find one during the turn. I commit Savant, and I commit Easy Mark, because we ain't got time to play it. I really got to find something, though, if I commit this Savant, because I need it for the Mythos phase. I don't commit Savant. Pilfer, you're going to have to get back to my hand again eventually. I can't do you right now. Uh, that puts me at 8, 9 to 3. Beat it by a million. Minus 4, don't care. That's passed by 2, baby. I get 2 resources from pickpocketing. I forgot to take my winnie draw. I draw two from pickpocketing, I draw one from cigarette case. Hello, Arrogance, good to see you. He's tripped. Now the question is, do I dirty fight him? Why would I not? It's five to three. That's only going to work for me well. If I get specifically tablet into big token, uh, I take an erect horror, <laughs> I take two two, no, I take one three, which has an erect horror as a component of it. Uh, it's only tablet. Like, I just got to man up. I just got to deal with it. I toss the dirty fight at this just to break it on, uh, break my arrogance up one. That's fine, honestly. If I get the damage, that's also huge. Unfortunately, I don't have any sleight of hands. At this point, I am probably going to draw my other bulldog next turn, uh, as well as my sleight of hands. I'm going to hard play this bulldog, and last action is going to be a shot with opportunist quick thinking at 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 to 3. Don't auto fail me. You bitch. <laughs> yeah, you should have stopped counting when you got double digits. You were really tempting fate with that one. Okay. Uh, that bullet's gone, by the way. Uh, we get to test Frozen in Fear now with Arrogance. Ah, I forgot to put Arrogance in the pile. That also means it's my fault now. Uh, I would like to commit Savant, uh, which puts me at 4 to 3. And Savant, which puts me at a million when he draw. Unfortunately, I have to take the arrogance back, but at least we get rid of Frozen and Fear. 
All right, that that auto fail sucked. I was gonna be able to kill the Capra or at least make it easy to kill next turn. And now instead, I'm just still here. At least Frozen Fear's out. Equine Hybrid. I can just swing up four without spending anything and then spend uh, four rewards on the next one. Is it just like swing, swing, and replay the axe? It's not hype, but it's not bad. Yep, yeah, uh, first action, I just swing the axe with nothing spent, six to two. Oh no, it's only five to two. Just don't get minus four, how hard is that? Come on. Uh, that's actually getting pretty scary, minus three, but we're fine, he takes one. I swing the axe again, I use the second charge, and I commit on the mend. This puts me at five, six, seven, to five. So I spend Accuracy Elders. Can I commit? No, I can't. And Lucky only works on failure, so Accuracy Elders it is if I want the clue. And you're damn right I want the clue. Cool. On the men goes aside. He's dead. And I get a clue from Elders for beating the Shroud value. I'm going to spend... Is this the thing that moves decoys, actually? This is the thing that moves decoys. It's a shame that the Capras don't care and the Capras are here. My last action will be replaying this Runic Axe like I talked about earlier. But before I end my turn, I need to drop this uh, decoy here. Now the real question is just, do I want to move this somewhere else? Yes, I am going to spend a second clue. I'm going to move this down here. I know it doesn't affect the Capra, but I want something down here if things start piling up. And that's gonna be it for me, unfortunately. So enemy phase, this guy readies, re-engages. This guy moves forward, trips again. He will not be readying this phase. This guy moves in, he takes two damage, but he ignores that decoy and that is scary as hell. That's it for enemies, upkeep. Slide of hand is finally shown its face right after I was forced to play the gun the hard way. Um, cigarette case is useless. Why am I even thinking about this? Upkeep. Death again, huh? Completely dead draws. Six doom. Last two enemies. We know we're getting a Capra. It can go anywhere. Well, it can't go here when he's got one. Putting it south seems really bad. I'm going to put it north side. And let it trigger this. Or, no, I thought I'd say north side. I'm gonna put it west side. Let it trigger this trap. It's the most response time, and it's the only way where it's getting trapped. Oh wait. Um. No, I'm putting it. With, is Vince going to have to respond to this? I think he is. That's why I'm not giving it to Vince. Also, west as well. Gross. All right. Uh, we dealt with nine of the first fourteen enemies. Unfortunately, the other five are currently in play. Technically, we're close till done. Longest night indeed. I'm an hour in and we are only seven turns in. We're starting the eighth. I say seven because we removed a doom at one point. All right, I think we have to ditch this Capra. I think this is a pretty definite evade the guy angle. I'm going to play breaking and entering, I think, to get a clue. Yep, we're gonna put breaking and entering into this. We're gonna commit arrogance because we have to, unexpected courage and nimble. Uh, our value for this is Oh wait, Breaking and Entering is a fucking book test. Oh, it's so gross. I'm not even gonna break and entering, I'm just gonna dodge him then. Uh, seven, eight, still seven, nine to three. Up six. I have no clues. It's fine, up six. Cool, I get a draw because I'm winning, I just keep forgetting to do it. I have slide of hand, gun, back online. Uh. That was brilliant. I get both pickpocketings. I get two draws. We're go we've got gas for ages. I get cigarette case. He's tripped. I'm gonna give him a dirty fight gunshot on my way out. I'm up a million. Quick thinking, watch this. I didn't bet, so I have to bet minimum because that's the only way to make it fair. Uh, up a million says that's fine, even though it is a minus three. I uh, <laughs> Last time I counted, I felt like I was tempting fate, so we're gonna not count. Uh, he takes two more. I didn't flip my action for the dodge. Okay, so we have a quick thinking action and a nimble. Uh, the quick thinking action... <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay, so Dirty Fighting and Nimble resolve simultaneously. Which means Quick Thinking is resolving simultaneously with Nimble currently. Whoa, no, don't do that. I hate that button. It's fucked this too. This guy was tripped. I'm gonna resolve my Nimble now, I think. And go one, two, three to this man. <laughs> and now I'll resolve my Quick Thinking action. And I think I'm going to kill this man. I have two cards in deck, that's fine. Um, I wanna draw one card with like Arrogance and Savants. Oh, man, there's there's like no good double commit here. I think I just have to throw the other Savant at it to draw it. You know what? I think I'm happy to just shoot the guy. Like I'm at nine, eight to three. I'm just gonna shoot the guy twice with Arrogance committed. Perfect, who needed the bullet? Uh, in that case, I'm going to play Sleight of Hand and get a new gun in play, because the old gun's not living up to the requirements I have for it. Quick thinking's out. I'm going to shoot the man at twice, uh, like I was saying, 9 to 3, with my next two actions. That's one damage, or sorry, two damage, and a barricade. He's out. Sorry if that feels like I'm playing fast and loose, but sometimes the numbers are so high that I cannot be asked to like fully explain what I'm doing. Uh, okay. Thank God for Nimble. The one of Nimble in this deck I knew would come in clutch. I just hadn't seen it yet. I was starting to think it was a stupid meme card, but no. It's exactly as massive as I thought it would be when you're able to commit it like every couple of turns for huge moves. I, I honestly don't know what I'd be doing if Winifred weren't on this team. And so far, every time I played The Long Night, I said those words. What would we do without Alessandra and her gang of power word enemies? What would we do without the carnivorous Mykonid? What would we do without Winifred? I think this scenario is either incredibly hard or absolutely perfect. And I don't quite know which. But every time I play last night, I have a really good time. Even though it's stressful as hell. This is definitely my favorite scenario in Hemlock by far. This guy's gonna ready, that guy's gonna ready. Vince is like fucking wildly out of position. I haven't used my Theo move. I have no clues. I have more money than God, which I probably need to use to go shoot horses. I'm gonna use my Theo move before I end my turn and come back to the middle with the expectation that I'm gonna like use Theo move again. It's not good enough. Still, there's... If I'm gonna have to move with Ajax... No, I'm not going to. Uh, I come here and then I spend my two resources to push even further out. Anyway, what I was saying is, <laughs> what the hell's Vince gonna do? He's so far out of position. Okay, so I think I'm gonna get up and walk around for a second, because we're like past the halfway point, I'm getting stressed. Let's wrap this turn, let's wrap this turn. I'm up two here, and I feel very confident that I need that clue and to then bounce the barricade, or the, the decoy rather, and I get an additional decoy from doing this. Perfect. Uh, so I'm gonna lightning bolt that decoy right here, over to this location to hit the Molting Hybrid. And then I am going to do the Investigate that I was talking about up to. Hopefully we just don't get caught. Perfect. Best possible result. Just build the fucking wall. I uh, get the last clue. And that lets me use this reaction to place a new decoy. Okay, I think we can just abandon Northside. I think Northside will hold until the dawn. It's a lot of barricades up here. Need to, no, I don't need to spend the clue because I did that all three action here. Uh, I can get the clues here. I can also just like start a fire here because uh, no, that's just dangerous. Like the idea is you start two fires here. And if you get worms up here that ignore the barricades, then uh, you'd be able to let the fires kill them. But that requires me to spend two actions across two turns dealing with that. Uh, I'm going to move, move. I don't have the money to buy anything. So I'm gonna gain a resource. Oh wait, no, I investigated. Investigate, move, move is all I've got. That's it for us, which brings us to enemy phase. Nothing, nothing, move, ignore, move, trigger. Uh, what I should have been doing this whole time is putting the trap token on them to mark this is the turn they've been trapped. And then upkeep phase, he readies, he readies, he clears the token. And then we upkeep. Deep knowledge. Manual decks. Fucking love manual decks. It's good to see you. 7 of 10. Time to reshuffle the enemy deck. Slithering hybrid. Most. That is this side. Next. Capra. Least. Anywhere. Welcome to the top. 
Oh, wait, 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 wait. Before I commit to this, uh, because hybrids, slithering hybrids, will go to the most, putting... All right, let me phrase this differently. Where the fuck else is he going? <laughs> you want to put him on the west side with everything else? I don't think so. Like, no, absolutely not. He's going to the top. He's taking two damage. And if that causes problems later, it's less than the problems it avoids now. Uh, so that's fine. This is a bit of a problem. This is a huge problem. And let's see what the evil phase actually does. Rotting remains. Let's imagine I remember to heal Jessica. It's kind of fucking important. Committing on the mend, by the way, and using a mask from all, uh, what's it called? Spiro mask. You can see my brain's melted. I need to go take that break I was talking about. But that is another rotting remains that dealt with. How many of those are in the deck? I must have hit all three, I think. <sighs> three, three direct actually kills me because of hypochondria, so it's not even an option. Uh, the way we have to push is the one that heals the damage. That requires a pilfer, which I believe is currently in my graveyard. Yeah, it is. But we're about to cycle. Oh, this is in my hand, by the way. I don't think there's anything I can do about it. I think I have to remove the Doom. I think believing that I can plow through all three of these guys in a timely fashion and pilfer this location before something falls apart on the east side is ridiculous. So I'm removing a Doom. And I'm gonna go save it and stretch my fucking legs because this is the most stressful thing in the world. It feels like you don't have the resources, and I know I do, but it's so close to running out. When he has to pop off so hard to keep us afloat, I'm like two auto fills away from crashing and burning at any moment. I'm terrified. And this hand is abysmal. I may as well have four blank cards. You think I have time to play a second Jessica, a Tarot, or a Hallowed Mirror? Get out of here. This is not, Vince is the worst kind of deck to bring to this scenario. Where he's got like a lot of low impact assets that take, like, like it's not a high tempo deck. It has the one huge burst swing thing with the ax that more than carries its weight and is actually pretty good in conjunction with the rest of the deck. But this scenario wants so much more tempo than the Vince deck can ever give. And he's doing fine. There are characters that have done so much worse than this Vince, but it feels like he is drowning to me. And like the pile up of enemies is just, I'm going to take a walk. I'll be back in five. See you soon. And the one thing I made a note of to myself before I got up is uh, I need to start this play with sleight of hand bulldog. Nothing else actually matters. That has to happen because I need that in play to, uh, not in play, I need this in graveyard to cycle when I start doing stuff. And I reckon the next action is probably walk in. Yeah, I'm gonna take my Theo action. I'm gonna walk in and make some friends. Now I could pay two resources to kill the horse, or I could pay three resources to deal two damage to the Capra. And honestly, those are about the same value to me. I need to dodge something and get a pickpocketing trigger. I'm at base seven. It's easier to dodge the horse, which lets me dirty fight the horse. I, I like all of that. Uh, are there clues here? There's a breaking and entering possibility here. Everyone here gets plus one fight and evade, you say. Great place to pile them up. Love this. Just gonna think of that as me having minus one to everything because it's easier. I don't have the resources, I feel like, for breaking and entering. I will soon. Like, as soon as I play breaking and entering, I'm gonna get two pickpocketings off. It's not a problem. I don't need money for anything else. Oh, fuck. I think I've just realized something. There's no manual dexterities in this graveyard. They're my bottom two cards. That's why I feel like I've sort of run out of card draws. It's haven't hit the two strongest draw effects in my deck. And the reason that's really important is because if I manual dex this, I'm going to have it committed when I cycle my deck, draw my other one. I'm going to have the next cycle of the deck have no manual dex. Is there a way around that? No, because like once you commit a manual dex, it's cycling. With bottom two manual dex, there's actually nothing I can do to counter that. I'm gonna breaking and entering. Savant manual decks, just like I was saying. There's nothing else to do. Uh, I'm up a million. The numbers don't even matter. They could be fucking anything. Don't you do it. Okay, anytime I see this, anytime I see pull another token, I'm like, all right, it's time to pull auto field. I'm ready for the roller coaster. I draw two cards from manual decks, one card from myself. And then I gain pickpocketing, pickpocketing. Uh, I have to automatically evade somebody. I'm going to shoot. Wait. Do I succeed by two or more? Then it's automatically evaded. I remember thinking about this with a new seeker. I'm going to assume I only get one trigger for them. So I should probably pay for the breaking and entering. Uh, I'm going to take the card draws, though. Slide of hands are back and ready. That's good to see. Uh, I'm going to automatically evade Capra Hybrid. 
Uh, that's also the cigarette case. Hello, Ace in the Hole. Good to see you. I'm going to dirty fight the Capra Hybrid. Up a fucking million on Bulldog. Pilfer can be used here. It's in my hand now, but I don't have the money for it, so... I think this is just a toss pilfer angle with manual decks. Oh shit, I'm so broke because of this. I don't have the money to shoot anyone. I'll just kill this guy the hard way, it's fine. Up a million, draw a card on money first. Get a barricade. Have to place it. Oh, I can choose where I place it. Uh, bird ignores barricades, I'm placing it here. I'm building the wall. Uh, maybe I actually place it here. Nothing's gonna trigger it anyway, it doesn't matter. And I could light this place on fire and run behind barricades for the final rounds of the game. Uh, I drew my winning card this time. Uh, I was shooting a guy. <laughs> it's important to actually spend ammo and deal damage. Take my manual deck draw. Okay, that's dirty fight result. What do we have? What do we have? We have Ace in the Hole going off. We have Quick Thinking going off. I wonder how many times Max once per round has caused me to cheat on Quick Thinking. Because the turn has gone on so long that I quick thinking at the start and end, having drawn both of them during the turn and don't even realize I've done it. That might have happened already. I don't think it has, but like, it would surprise me not at all if it had. I'm fine just shooting twice to kill these guys. There's no benefit to a Nimble right now. This is getting saved. It's one of the most important cards in my hand. This is getting overdrawn. It's one of the least important. And we're definitely continuing to commit. We use Watch This for one. Wish it for, for more. But I've got nothing else. I use Watch This for one with Quick Thinking. Shooting the Exhausted Guy at a million. Auto fail is the only number that exists. Cool. I get the Quick Thinking action. I make my money back. I immediately spend my money and shoot the horse. Horse down. Uh, breaking and entering pass by a million, so it'll come back to my hand at the end of the turn. You know what's important? Picking up the clue you played breaking and entering to get. That was the whole reason I did this. Quick thinking action. I would like to finish the horse. I'm at four, five, six on a dirty fighting punch with using fist instead of foot. This is a sleight of hand. What do I care? Yeah, I, I'm going to use the bulldog to finish him off with my quick thinking action. And I have not great commits, to be honest. So actually, get that bullet back. I'm going to... Drawing a card is dog shit. What am I doing? This is awkward as hell. Oh, I just cycled my deck. I need to take the horror about it. Sorry about that, Delilah. This is my second Savant. I've got anything you can do better and double Unexpected Courage in here, but I'm afraid to use the Savant before Mythos. So I think... I really do feel like I'm just not going to pop off. Like, I might just end my turn with Ace in the Hole in hand. That overdraw something. I'd much rather just use Ace in the Hole and have it be not perfect. I can engage this guy and then like just shoot him, right? I don't need to kill the Capra. There's always gonna be a guy here next turn. So quick thinking, I actually engage this stupid bird. Then I play Ace in the Hole and get my actions back. I could break Hypochondria, but like I'm honestly not very afraid of it. I'm gonna shoot the bird twice. Like there's no reason to do anything else. So I spend two actions and two bullets. And I don't have good commits, so I'm simply not going to commit anything. Uh, and that's still fucking 11 because <laughs> of dirty fighting and this plus base 7. 11 to 2. I think that's good enough. Give me another barricade. Sign me up. He's taken 2 damage. And then action left. I can still just punch at 6. That's up 4. I may as well. That's fine. I didn't commit shit to that one. Okay, so Winnie's got West Side handled. I kind of thought she would need help, but apparently not. This Capra gets to hang out forever. We're not dealing with them. Like, there's four barricades there. As long as nothing else ever spawns North Side, or more realistically, Winnie's gonna clean up and then just ride Ajax in and waste them with Bulldogs like she's been doing all scenario. Over here, Capra bounces, Squid comes in. What convinced you about that? <laughs> Oh, uh, that's a good fucking question. Uh, end of turn, breaking and entering comes back to hand. I don't even overdraw. Nice. Uh, four vents, four vents. Like, I think I just walk out. This is like move right. I can lightning bolt, move, move, and kill the Capra. 
And then if I don't auto fail, just like walk back and I can drop a decoy or something here before I do. I think that's the play. I lightning bolt move by paying two. Then I hard move, the Capra engages. And that was my second action, right? Lightning bolt move, move. My second action that I'm currently doing is the swing. Total value of three fight plus three shroud is six. Worst totem, worst totem, worst token is four. Value I'm aiming for is 10 if I want these clues. I need a seven. I'm currently looking at seven with one accuracy. Get to a 10, I need two accuracies and a fist. So I can use elders, 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 damage. That's enough to finish them off. And then accuracy, accuracy, Jessica, to get me to a total of 10, which beats the bag by shroud. Let's fucking go. Thanks, you hero. That's not the colored token I thought I got at first. Have an on the mend, you champion. All right, all of these are out. This guy is also out. And I trigger elders, 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 and take all three of the fucking clues from this location. All right, that's the tempo we need. We needed those clues. That's why I was willing to replay an axe, by the way, instead of letting it try to recharge. I can place a trap here as a reaction to doing that. Sign me the fuck up. Uh, can I move traps now that I've gotten all the clues here? Oh, I can just do it whenever I want anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna take this trap. I'm gonna throw it over to the other side because I, like, Winnie has to leave. She's gonna deal with this guy and bounce. And then I'm gonna spend a clue. And in fact, I'm gonna spend a second clue. I'm gonna drop a decoy and a trap here. Uh, do I want to... If I'm gonna barricade up, I can just do it next turn. There's no reason to stay here. I move back. And that's it for me. Hunter phase, he bounces. Can't get through. This guy doesn't pay to... That guy doesn't care about the rules. He just goes through. This guy's going to ready during upkeep. And we're going to take upkeeps. Hey, perception. Hey, opportunist. I feel like I haven't seen very much opportunist this scenario. Okay, let's see it. Most. That is required to be the top. This was the fear. What else do we have? Oh, all right, we're going back north. The wall will not hold until dawn. That was a lie. That was propaganda. The wall is unfeasible and falling apart at the seams. Shit. Uh, this guy does trip the decoy immediately, though, and take a damage. And I'm going to do what I said I should have done the first time, which is mark that he doesn't ready by putting that on him okay evil cards what do we have what do we have obscuring fog is it the obscuring fucking fog sign me up false lead is also here i have a clue i can drop a clue if i fail a four book test you know i think i'm going to take that one at zero i think i'm okay with that i think that's not a problem like i would have liked to keep the clue but i'm feeling good about west side I don't think I need to... Oh, wait. <laughs> I pass anyway. Okay, let me tell you what I did wrong, and then I'm going to keep my clue and laugh about it. Uh, so false lead says revelation. If you have no clues, it gains search. And then it says, if you have one or more clues, test for a book for each point you fail by place one of your clues on your location. Everyone holds the card while they're doing this and acts like it's still in play, but it's actually already been discarded. You're taking a test where the rules have been clearly defined. Oh, that's why it says during your turn. I couldn't have done it. Look at the rules being polished and rock solid for once. Good job, Hemlock. I thought I could timing window to throw it down and get rid of it. But no, that was actually a really good zero. It wasn't just misplay on my part. Okay, that was incredibly soft. That could have gone so much worse. This is the best vital night I've ever had. This is so good. Our last two were so much worse than this. And I can't help but feel like it is specifically Winnie's fault that it's going so well. All right, Winifred, what do we have? I think we're gonna start this with an evade check. Uh, actually, losing the clue wouldn't matter because I'd have wanted to use breaking and entering anyway. Oh, this is in my hand, which means I actually have overdrawn. And funnily enough, it's not breaking and entering. I, I don't have time to play a thieves skin, or money for that matter. I am probably on Winnie going to ride in here and fight this stuff. Where's Vince? Oh, he's busy. He's dealing with a stupid slug. Uh, and he can't actually beat Trout of five. Like, base 12 is so much to ask. Obscuring Falk is a problem. So Vince is just gonna, like... Why do you have a Capra? What? I think I gave the Capra to the wrong per... I'm 100% sure this is Winnie's Capra. That's what went wrong. I don't need to rewind time. Winnie didn't kill either of them. They just dropped them both to low health because I wanted to spend actions on the bird because it was efficient. Okay. 
We don't need to rewind. I just put it on the wrong board. We're good. So Vince does need to kill this luck, which is action, action, move, lightning bolt. Like ideally, I'm just gonna be here waiting for the next slug. So Vince's turn is easy and straightforward and I may as well get started. My ax is actually pretty low on resources. Do I have an alternative kill? It hits for horror, the dog is useless. I'm gonna be honest, I might just swing a base. I might just like engage and then swing twice at, that's only five. It's not good enough. Yeah, I have to script weave a charge and use power accuracy. Okay, uh, engage, I use a charge, power accuracy. That puts me at five, six, seven to three, beats the bag. I'll take barriers all day, every day. Just quick check, have I discarded any enemies just by accident? No, good. Um, that guy's dead. I don't get anything else for it. That was just killing him. I could break this with perception. Like the issue is just why bother? What am I gonna draw? I'm gonna move back. Uh, do I have a clue? I have two clues. I'm going to spend both clues on vents before I leave. I'm gonna drop a decoy here and a barrier here. And we're gonna try to abandon east side before I move back. And that's gonna be it for Vince. He's out of everything. He doesn't have the money to buy passage yet. Okay. When he... I can just uh, like get to here and catch the slug next turn. I don't actually have to ride in and deal with all of this, which is good because I still have stuff on me. Breaking and entering is useless, but that means I can easily play it. Speaking of easily playing it, I have to spend my one resource playing this sleight of hand to get a British Bulldog into play. I've got a Nimble. I'm probably using it shortly, but I don't need to use it first test. I want to use it on a fight test, on the last fight test I do. I'm going to get two resources from pickpocketing, which I'm probably just going to use to shoot the horse. I think this turn, the play is to try to deal with both these guys and get a pile of easy marks in my hand for six resources so I can start paying Delilah again. I'm gonna stop thinking about anything to do with dealing with this and just look at dealing with these two as efficiently as possible. And I don't have the money to shoot this no matter how the turn goes. I'm gonna dodge the Capra hybrid first. We're looking at seven to three. We'll do opportunist eight to three, breaking and entering in nine to three. First action. Minus two, opportunist comes back. I forgot my winnie draw. Pickpocketing, pickpocketing, gain two. Oh wait, if I type a number, Oh my God. I don't know why, I just like typed two for no reason. I didn't know I could set that with numbers. Anyway, I've, uh, I was talking about getting easy marks together. So I did my winnie draw. I did my two resources. Take my two draws from pickpocketing. Take my draw from Lucky Cigarette Case. This guy is tripped, but uh, he's probably not going to be alive for long. So no reason to bother putting him all the way back because I'm going to dirty fight him. Arrogance is committed for the rest of the turn. Let's just leave it in front of me. I am going to use opportunity. Do I need to use anything? Because I'm using the British Bulldog for all of my attacks this turn, because that's there's just no reason not to. So uh, that is seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, still ten to three. If I'm trying to draw. I really should, but uh, I have a savant. I'm happy to cycle the unexpected courage with my opportunist. Opportunist comes back. I get my winnie draw. This goes away. This man is dead. Next up, we're still probably using Opportunist Unexpected Courage just for value. Uh, our base value on the shots, nine to two. Yep, we're gonna keep cycling the Unexpected Courages with this method. And this is up a million. Should have done my winning draw first. I will take it, come back, get a, another barricade. This man is dead. And I think I'm going to double easy mark and hope for the 50-50. Even if I don't get it, that's just like enough money. Four is enough. I would like more, but all the same, I'm gonna do two easy marks. Not gonna do the last one, unfortunately. And arrogance is in hand. And I have a move off of Theo and a clue. I don't have a reason to spend my clue if I'm not moving. Wherever I go next turn is probably an Ajax move, but if I go here, Ajax moves are a little bit more generous. Like I can Theo here, and then next turn I can Theo here, Lightning Bolts. I, I don't know where I should be. I honest to, okay, I know where I should be. I Theo out to the field, and I use my last clue to place a decoy here. 
So I think that's the way where Winnie's the best because she's always Ajax moving into something. There's never an alternative. And I've got the nimble to like dance around the map. Uh, but that's it for us. Apparently I never flipped Vince's last action. It's because it was a boring move action. <laughs> right, that's it. Enemy phase. The Slithering Hybrid does not play by our rules. The Capra bounces. This man fails to ready an upkeep. There are no other enemies. We upkeep, we upkeep, Vince is fine, but Winnie is not. Right on time, easy mark. You can get discarded for your lack of punctuality. The other discard's looking quite a bit, oh, never mind. Lucky cigarette case without Relic Hunter, lol. Yeah, that'll be the one. Okay, I think we've got this. I feel like we got in a shitload of cultists and the number of barricades on the map makes me feel a lot safer than I otherwise would. Eight of 10 doom, evil cards, monsters first, south side. Uh. Technically, he's not going to do anything, but it's a bit sketchy to assume that's going to be true. East side. Oh, that's an unfortunate side for you to spot on. You can have three damage about it. I'm just going to shrink the trap. That seems like the faster way of fixing that. Okay, so east side is definitely still fine. South side might need help. North side needs help. First, evil cards. Fuck. Uh, it's better on vents, but like shit, that is not... Is it better on Vince? And I could just have to go here, engage, and wait. It sucks. And desiccation. I think we're way past the point of play action. Oh no, it's sleight of hand. Well, I mean, that's not a big deal. Uh, it's kind of annoying because of this. This guy is basically done. East side will not resolve unless a mythos card forces us to stay here for an extra round. Vince getting frozen in fear just means his entire, oh wait, no, he's not taking a move action. It's lightning bolt because he has two resources. Okay. He lightning bolts up. Frozen fear is unaffected, but when I engage, it's going to immediately trigger and cost me an extra action. So it's a two action engage. And then I've got uh, plenty of stuff on this axe to kill the man. There are clues here, and I probably want to use these clues to fix the problem in front of me. Because if I just wall up here, I'm going to be fine on north side. Like for a little while, and I only need to be fine for a little while longer. So two of these puts me at five, six, seven, eight, nine on accuracy. I need to beat three plus three plus four is 10. I throw on the mend at this. I'm at four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. I would really like one more fist so I can change the commit, but I don't have it. So I just accept that minus four sucks. I think I do. So I take accuracy damage and on both I script weave elders, putting me at three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So on a minus four, I don't get my clues, but on anything else, he dies and I get the clues. Let's see it. All right, good. Whew. Discard those, set this aside. Take my clues. Now my turn is done here. I don't think there's any reason I should, oh, there are things that can pull guys. And he ignores. I'm going to spend these immediately. Vince's job is to make sure that they don't get through. So I'm gonna spend those and I'm going to take barrier barrier because now that the game is just a waiting game and we're trying to survive, barriers are suddenly the best. We no longer need to kill them. The damage from these other tokens no longer matters. It's just about surviving. So we take double barrier which ends our turn. We're testing three to three on Frozen and Fear. Let's make that five to three. There are a bunch of minus threes, right? Like there are two minus threes and then things that are minus three adjacent, which is what I'm referring to. I can't imagine I need this deep knowledge. Like Mythos Phase does exist. Actually, I'm not committing shit. Fuck the Frozen and Fear. I'm not moving. I'm, I'm not relevant. If Vince is doing something, I don't know what it is. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna take this test at zero. All Vince needs to do is survive the mythos phase. Yeah, frozen in fear sticks, that's fine. You've done great, Vince. You've burned through like 12 charges on a runic axe, killing enemies and picking up clues. Good tempo. For once, I feel like even though Vince is getting outshined, he's not doing badly. He's doing really well. Just Winnie is fucking cracked. Now over here on Winnie, this should have been in my hand because it was put into play with sleight of hands. We're about to cycle our deck. What is the card we didn't need? That's a good fucking question. It's probably second gun. 
I probably would have discarded second gun. I don't want to like think too hard about this. And it's, but, like, it's always gonna be a somewhat result oriented retroactive discard because I just didn't realize like side of hand comes back. Well, I realized it obviously, I just didn't recognize that there's so many moving pieces. Uh, this guy is probably not important. This guy will still need to die when he has no clues. Seven to two. Throw a quick thing opportunist at it. Nine to two. Uh, eight to two with arrogance. That's fine. I'm gonna use my last charge of thieves because it's my first action. Take my winner for draw. Hey, opportunist. Good to see you. Take all of it back. I mean, I pretty much already was taking it back. I'm gonna flip this because I don't know how to mark the quick thinking otherwise. Uh, I've been trying to use the quick thinking card instead of flipping the icons to be better about timing windows, but it's coming back to hand and active, so that's the best I've got. Uh, I get a clue. I get a resource. I get a cigarette case draw. I get a horror. Theo, you can have one. Everyone else got one already. The horse cannot soak horror for you. He is a horse. He does not recognize the terrors of the mythos. Fair. Very fair. I'm going to put quick thinking all the way to the left side of my hand to remind myself I can't play it again. I'm going to use my quick thinking action to ride Ajax out over here to the Lupine Hybrid. Because the other sides do look dealt with. This man has the least foot in the entire world. Just don't auto fail a dodge check against him. Uh, that's opportunist base seven to one up six. I need one more skill to get opportunist back. With anything you can do better and savant in hand, I think that's pretty obviously it. I'm gonna play my sleight of hand because I feel like it's just be killing the guy at the end of the turn. And I know that deals me a damage, which deals me a direct horror, but it's still just the thing to do. Anyway, we put the gun in play before the dodge check, and then for our commit with Savants and anything you knew better, it's an easy Savant. Uh, we're up a million, just on auto fail. Don't you do it. I'll gladly take another barrier. Thanks. Opportunist comes back, Savant goes away, Arrogance comes back. This man is tripped. Pickpocketing, pickpocketing. One, two, two. Oh shit, I've been forgetting to do the parlays. Well, it looks like I know what I'm doing next turn. <laughs> I've done my draws, I, I think I just did all my draws. Uh, we dirty fight the man with the gun. Up a fucking million. Uh, I commit opportunist easy mark just because I can. Don't. We're good. Opportunist comes back. I get my winnie draw. I always do it in the wrong order. I don't think I have a weakness where it actually matters, but still. Uh, he takes two. We need to do these codexes. Um... Oh wait, she's specifically getting the last clue. I'm sure I could retroactive this, but I think I found a different solution. Nimble, opportunist, arrogance, I'm up a million. I'm seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, back down to 10, 11, 12. We just shoot him again with all of this committed. We're gonna run over to this location with the clue. I have no way of getting clues left. There's more clue finding cards in the deck. We're gonna draw some probably. Anyway, I do it. Minus two. I don't even think hers actually matters. I don't know why I put that in there. Uh, Nimble goes away. It's the only one that goes away. I triple move up here. This guy dies. That's the weirdest way to do that. I don't know why I clicked the buttons in the way that I did. Uh, now that I'm up here, I could theoretically get clues if I had anything in this thieves kit or a breaking and entering or a pilfer. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, two of those, three of those are in my deck and I probably will find one next turn, but right now I've got nothing. I'm gonna take my last action to the parlay on Thea, which actually does matter. And I'm going to choose to toss one opportunist and an unexpected courage, which are weirdly the worst cards in my hand, to do Theo's codex. I just forgot to do that until now, but I mean, really, you want to wait till the end anyway. Uh, Theo's thing allows me to move a barrier, decoy, or trap from my location to any other location and disengage from each enemy engaged with you and move to that location. Which, like, that's cool. That's just a straight up teleport, which, like, Without serious meta knowledge, it's kind of hard to capitalize on, but I'm gonna record Theo stood by me, which is the important part. And next turn, we need to pass a book test on Vince, but I think he's been like holding reception, so it's fine. Uh, that was my last action on the parlay, so upkeep, upkeep. I, technically wrong order. This guy fails to ready because of that. This guy does ready, this guy eats a barricade. Everyone else is dead, everyone else is dead. Desiccation leaves play. Potentially final turn. Potentially final turn. 
Bird at South. Ask me if I give a shit. Dog at North. Welcome to the gang. There's plenty to go around. Evil cards, don't do it to me. Let me leave. Uh, false lead gain surge. I have no clues left on vents. Oh my god. Do you think I care about Crypt Chill? I throw Sparrow Mask at it. Because, like, if it doesn't survive, I'm eating... Yeah, like, uh, there's just no counter argument. If Sparrow Mask isn't going to make me pass, it's the thing I get Crypt Shield on. It's alright, Sparrow Mask. You still did great. And over here, just like, don't 3 3 direct me. <laughs> As if I need to play a card this turn. <sighs> we win. And, like, I don't know. I don't want to say it's clean. This, there were points in the middle where I feel like I was living on a prayer like before this wall went down when there were three guys right there that was a high chance for failure uh we're at one hour 52 raw recording by the way i wonder why that's gonna be in the final video <laughs> but uh we, i'm not just gonna end my turn immediately i do have a thing i need to do on fence book two up three i'm gonna commit perception and take that test i pass read his codex which is four Wow, we all get a clue. I'm sure that would have been useful earlier. But the important thing is, Will stood by me. And uh, what does Rosa do? Because I, I just can't do it. I've got no ability to trigger that shit. It gives me two barriers. Like, I'm certain I could have triggered that earlier at some point. There's no way Winnie didn't finish location. I just completely forgot about codexes. As you can see, I may have been thinking about something else. Fuck the codexes. And it wasn't until the end was in sight that I started thinking about them. Uh, I passed both my turns. This guy rides in. This guy readies, knocks a barrier, knocks a barrier, knocks a barrier. Upkeep phase, whatever we draw, it doesn't matter. There's nothing in our decks that can hurt us. This goes away. Uh, we test this. Uh, if this pulls like specifically a tablet penalty token, it doesn't. We just deal damage to Vincent, it wouldn't matter. Top of the round, Mythos, Doom, advances, done. We're given a choice. We can either have a resident under our control die or we can suffer a mental trauma. Now, because both of these people give us allies in the finale, Theo gets us him and his sister Helen, Will gets us Will and River. I don't want either of them to die, which means we all suffer one mental trauma. It's just continuing to rack up. We're up to five trauma on Vince at this point. And now that we've done that, we can advance the act. There is no damage on the captives, which is to some degree luck, I'm not gonna lie, but, uh. <laughs> we, I feel like we could have played differently if we'd gotten unlucky with like tablet pulls on Mythos cards resulting in stuff getting here. Except for uh, Capras, which can be hit. Capras are a problem. Like Capra into the tablet ripping them through faster can be very scary. But other than Capra, everything only hits for two anyway when it's attacking. So this actually only hits for one. So you can take a hit and then just deal with this location to fix it. Oh, sorry, R1, four or fewer, not four or more. There is no damage, five bonus experience, the captives were saved. We can add Ajax to a deck, and like, Ajax is sick in this scenario. But why the fuck would I want to spend an ally slot on Ajax? Like, God no. Ajax can stay at the barn where he belongs. <laughs> we can also, oh, it doesn't even give us a choice. It says choose an investigator. You have to take Rosa Marquez. I mean, I, I'm not sure I would want her, to be honest, but if I have to put her in my deck, okay, I'm gonna give her to Winnie. Am I? Yeah, Winnie can just buy a Charisma and have room for her, it's fine. I'm gonna give her to Winnie. Actually, she commits for manual decks, that's the real reason to give her to Winnie. I cannot get enough cards that commit for two foot, dude. We're going to mark Southern Fields and record that Dr. Marquez has a plan. And then we go to Prelude, Dawn of the Final Day with our five, six, seven experience because of the bear who I'd completely forgotten about because it has actually been almost two hours. I do want to say, I had a blast with the longest night. I really, really like this scenario. To everyone who like got the impression I really hate Hemlock Vale, I don't. There, th There's no scenario other than Reddit and Rock that I expressly dislike, I think. I obviously don't have like really thorough opinions on all of it yet, but like, Hemlock House is fine. I think the final act giving you the victory is absolutely stupid. But with that meta knowledge, Hemlock House is a fine scenario and it's nice to have one option that isn't fight centric. I like the Lost Sister quite a lot, even though it was really soft because I got best possible RNG. 
And I love this scenario because every time I played it, we've won. I think we've actually full completion won or maybe almost full completion won on all three attempts. And like, it's been stressful and difficult and unique every time. Like, this is one of my favorite scenarios in all of Arkham. And on the whole, I do like Hemlock House. It's still like probably not even in my top three campaigns, but like, holy shit, do I like The Longest Night. And even the things that I really dislike, like the preludes, I like that they tried the preludes. They didn't land for me at all, but I like the concept of them. Anyways, I've got some experience to spend. I'm pretty sure next time I see you, there will be a beguiling and winning stack, but for the rest of it, I don't really know. I've been Rather Incoherent. This has been Arkham Horror Tower Defense, The Longest Night. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please do like, comment, and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. It does help the channel grow. And speaking of things that I greatly appreciate, I cannot overstate my gratitude for my supporters on Patreon and my members on YouTube. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you in the next one.